right now. Okay. Uh, let's see, connecting to YouTube. There we go. All right, we're live on YouTube. Hey guys, we're gonna be starting in just a second. We got uh, uh, we got a lot of people signing on, so we'll give it just a second, and we'll be ready to go. So, all right, Matt, how are we looking? Just about there. Go ahead and close that. Ray's coming back. Yep, we're good to go. All right, Ray, your camera is doing something. Should I be on? Yeah, go ahead. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the BA Masterclass. My name is David Smith. I have Ray North uh, Northcutt with me. He is one of our uh, he's one of our loan officers on our VA team. He's going to be answering questions in the chat box. Uh, so for everybody who's actually here live with us. Uh, but uh, I know that we've got a lot of friends in Veteran to Veteran and uh, on YouTube who are watching this as well. Uh, stick around. We're going to talk about a lot of great things uh, associated with the VA loan. So, Ray, you ready to go? Let's do it, guys. All right, cool. So everybody in the chat box, go ahead. Tell us hello. Tell us uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, tell us where you're coming in from so that we can uh, we can see what you guys are actually doing. So, Ray, if you're ready, my name is David Smith. Uh, I'm branch production manager at, uh, at, at Loan Depot. Uh, I'm one of the senior leaders on the VA team. My background, I'm former Army. Uh, I served a total of eight years uh, in the military. I was at 11 Charlie, which is an infantry mortarman. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, unfortunately, I did end up getting injured and needed to get out, so I got into real estate. Uh, I've been a licensed real estate agent now for over 20 years, uh, but for the last 11 years, I've really been on the mortgage side of the house. I spent half of that time with USAA. And I spent the other half of the time uh, really traveling around the country, teaching real estate agents and consumers uh, all about the VA mortgage program. So it's something I absolutely love to talk about. Uh, we've, we've had the opportunity to train over 22,000 uh, real estate agents just within the last handful of years. So this is a very, uh, uh, very big program, a lot of interest about this program. It's gotten light years better. And I'm going to show you guys a lot about what that looks like today. So uh, like I mentioned, I'm on the VA team at Lone Depot. Everybody on my team served in the military. So we have just an incredible team with a bunch of West Point graduates, a Naval Academy graduates, some enlisted folks, all of us dedicated to serving the military mission. So like I said, Ray, Ray is actually here with you guys today. Uh, he's a West Point graduate. He's an engineer by trade. So he's uh, pretty, good with, uh, pretty good with the numbers, if you will. So, uh, but he'll answer any questions you guys have. So feel free to, to hit him up and uh, he'll answer. And then we'll, we'll do some Q&A at the end if we have time. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different things, right? A little bit about the VA history, some of the some of the common questions that are out there, VA 101, different scenarios that are out there, uh, who qualifies for a VA loan. Then, of course, uh, as a real estate agent, how do we win deals? How do we work with the VA or how do we work with veterans and, and make sure that we're doing it the right way? So, guys, I always like to tell you, early that there's going to be a test when we're done, right? So in order to get the certificate and get all the goodies that we're going to give you, tons of marketing material, tons of different things to help you with your VA business, we'll get all of that at the uh, at the end. So before I start too far, I see a lot of you guys are actually here. Uh, let's ask a couple poll questions, uh, learn a little bit about you. So first poll question is, have you or a, me or a member of your immediate family served in the military? Media family, I like to say grandmother, grandfather, mom, dad, brother, sister, spouse, uh, and then uh, son or daughter. And we'll give that a second. I know it takes a second for the poll questions to come in. And yeah, we've got a pretty good sized group here. Cool. Lots of folks. Uh, I always get the question too. Uh, are we actually live? Today is December 6th, Tuesday at noon central time. All right. Yeah. So right off the bat, here we go. Looks like... Roughly 70% of you have a uh, member of your family served in the military. Uh, second poll question, if you served in the military, tell me what branch. If, uh, if you did not serve, it's the, the last answer, did not personally serve. Uh, I know usually on a class like this, we know that we're going to have some, uh, uh, some military folks here. So, yeah, so right off the bat, Army's on the board. There we go. Navy's on the board. And you guys know what's happening. I think it's this weekend. Ray, is it this weekend? Army Navy should be this weekend, right? It's either this weekend or next. I got to pay attention to that. All right. Yeah. So it looks like a whole bunch of the different branches, uh, sir, are represented here. Uh, that's awesome. Love to see that. Good job, guys. 
Good job. Army Navy this Saturday. Thank you. Got it. Yeah, so that, I, for some reason, I always think it's like a two-week lapse, and it's not. All right, what makes a VA loan great? Guys, this is where I always love to start off. But the, the VA loan is one of the absolute greatest benefits that we earn uh, for serving our country. I, I know that we have the opportunity to, to have VA health care, uh, dental, vision, all of that great stuff. There's also the GI Bill, which is pretty extraordinary for, for education and things like that. But the VA home loan specifically is one of the absolute greatest benefits that we earn. And I'm going to talk a lot about some of the history associated around this thing. But here's one of the things I want you guys to understand. 22 million people have earned the right to use this benefit. 22 million people right now can take advantage of this program. But here's what the VA also just said. The VA just said roughly 13% have actually done it. So what happened to the other, you know, let's call it 20 million people, give or take, right? Why, why have 20 million people not done this? Okay, well, we understand a lot of people have never purchased a home. So we get, you know, that group's out there, right? But then other people who do have a mortgage, the greatest majority said that it's a basic lacking of understanding on how the VA mortgage program works or the people who were representing them, be, be it a loan officer, a, uh, a real estate agent, what have you, may not have given the best direction or guidance on, how, on on what program to use. And that's that's really what we want to change today. We want to raise our education level, start to understand how this program works. And the best way to do that is understand what it actually is, right? So the VA Mortgage Program was a part of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act in 1944. Test question. During which war was the VA loan created? Guys, it was created right in the middle of World War II. It was created during World War II. Why? What was actually going on at this time? So in 1944 is when we first started to see people coming back uh, from being overseas, right? They wanted to calm down. They wanted to buy homes. But at that time, the mortgage market was dramatically different than what you see today. And in fact, most conventional loans required a pretty significant down payment. Uh, the interest rate was somewhere around eight, eight and a half percent. Uh, there were only, I, I want to say there were only like 15 year loans or 10 year loans. So they were relatively short with a high down payment. So the government really wanted to help all of our soldiers who were coming back get into something that they could, uh, better afford, right? This was the first time that hundred percent financing was being made available. Uh, they were capped on what the interest rate could actually be. It was very, very impressive mortgage vehicle for the time, right? But here's what's really happened during this Servicemen's Readjustment Act. This is where the government, for like the first time, wanted to significantly help all of those who served our countries. They wanted us to be, uh, they wanted us to be business owners. They wanted us to be homeowners, and they were going to help us with secondary education. All of this was pretty extraordinary. It was revolutionary, to be honest, right? But when it comes to the VA home loan itself, here's one of the things I want you to remember. Every single year since 1944, and to be honest, uh, sometimes it's multiple times a year, just like this year, but every single year, there's some sort of a change, some sort of a modification to this program. Sometimes it's completely monumental. And this just happened. January 1st of 2020, the entire VA mortgage program was completely redone and a whole bunch of us missed it. But my point to this is, this is why there's so many misunderstandings about the VA loan is because it constantly is changing and most people don't keep up to date with every single change that's out there. I'm going to share with you guys some of them as we go through here, right? There's one thing that's never changed. It's what the program actually is. The base, the most basic way that I can say this, the VA makes a guarantee to the lending institution for 25% of the loan. The VA is an insurance policy, right? So what is it not? Because I hear this all the time. The VA is not the one who funds the loan at the transaction. The government doesn't send any money to the title company to actually fund the transaction. That's our job. What we get in return is an insurance policy. In the event of default, so if a veteran goes into short sale, a veteran goes into foreclosure, the VA is on the hook for the first 25% of the loan. They pay the mortgage company directly in the event of default. Now, why is this so important? Why is this concept so important? Because here's what this really means. Because the VA is giving us an insurance policy, right? It has dramatically reduced our risk as a mortgage company. It's reduced our risk to lend that money. Make sense? But here's what the VA says in return. We reduced your risk. You need to do something special for our veterans. And here's what it is. Number one, 
you are going to provide 100% financing, right? Uh, this is, now listen to me, this is one of the biggest changes that has ever happened. I just got a text message on this question, not, not like 15 minutes ago. The VA made a change on January 1st of 2020, right when COVID started, right? The VA changed this program. A veteran can now get 100% financed, meaning no down payment required for anything they can financially qualify for. We are no longer capped for the first time ever. This is huge, guys. My team has already closed transactions that were $3 million, $2.5 million, $1.5 million, all of them 100% financed because that's what the veteran could qualify for, right? So if the veteran doesn't own multiple homes with active VA loans, and they've never foreclosed in the past on a VA loan, they can get 100% finance for anything that their income can justify. Secondly, the VA has very competitive rates. And compared to all the other mortgage programs that are out there, VA is very competitive on the interest rate that's being offered. And in most cases, VA is usually the best, right? To be honest, VA is usually the best. But the third thing about a VA loan that's super important is what it doesn't have. A VA loan does not have PMI. There is no mortgage insurance. And this is huge. Why? Because number one, it gives the veteran more buying power because they're not wasting money on junk fees. But number two, the money that they are spending on their loan, more of it is going towards principal, which is how you build wealth in the long term, right? So this is pretty extraordinary. This is what makes the program just unbelievable. 100% uh, financing, that's like almost impossible to find. Uh, but the veteran can put money down if they want, uh, but they don't have to. Okay. All right. So the top questions. So I told you that we do all kinds of training. We train real estate agents all across the country. Uh, that's why a lot of you guys are here too. We're also live online right now. We have a lot of consumers who are watching this course as well. Guys, I get the same questions. I've trained on many different military bases. I get the same questions all the time. And I'm going to show you guys these questions so you know what they are plus the right answer. Right. The first question. The number one question that I get asked, can I use my VA loan more than once? Guys, the answer is yes. Yes, you can. There are so many people who think the VA loan program is a one and done program or it's a first time home buyers program. All of that is false. Once, you, once you've earned the right to use this benefit, you can use it for every house purchase you ever make. Secondly, does the benefit expire? Not anymore. There was a long period of time where it did, right? But then the VA, I told you they make changes every single year. This thing was eliminated decades ago. And everybody who's earned the right still has the right uh, to use this benefit forever, right? Now, can I have multiple VA loans at a time? I know some of you are saying no, and some of you are saying yes. The right answer is yes. There's some different rules that apply. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute but you absolutely can have multiple VA loans at the same time. It's, it, and in fact, a lot of the people do, a lot of people do, right? Now, is there a limit? Uh, is there a size limit to the VA home loan? You guys just learned this. The answer of course is not any more. This is huge, absolutely huge. Next question, does a service connected disability affect the VA loan in any way? Does a service connect to disability? The answer is yes, and it's pretty significant. And I'm going to talk about it in the very next section, so I won't steal the thunder. All right, can I can I use my VA loan while on active duty? This is this is like one of the craziest questions I've ever heard, but I get it. I get it every time I go to a military base, guys. The answer is yes, and in fact, uh, there was a military base where where a loan officer just got in trouble for advertising that you could only use it as a veteran. Like, you know, the reality is, is people on active duty can use the VA loan and as a veteran. Makes, it's crazy what we hear out there, right? Uh, if I served in the National Guard or I served in some one of the reservists, uh, am I eligible for a VA loan? Guys, the answer is yes. I'll break it all down. I'll show you what it looks like. But the, the, the rules are just a little bit different, right? So here's all the questions. Matt, will you make this available for them? Uh, here's all the questions with the right answers. Uh, Matt's going to post up here at the top of the chat box. You guys can download this. You can go use it for your marketing, uh, co-brand it, put your business card on it. These are the top questions that we always get with the actual right answers. And then at the end, we're going to send you all of the downloads uh, via email as well. So don't panic if you can't download it right now. All right, next question or next, next topic. 
the VA funding fee. This is something a lot of veterans are going to ask you about. They have questions about what this thing is, what it actually, what it does. So the best way to say it is the VA funding fee is a one-time fee per transaction. So every time a veteran uses a VA loan, the government, the VA, charges what's called the VA funding fee. Okay, This fee is collected at closing and is sent directly to the VA. Right, The VA mortgage company is not allowed to make a profit off the VA funding fee. Everybody has to charge the exact same amount. So the biggest questions I get from my real estate agents are three things. Are, are, are how do we pay for it, right? There's three ways to pay for it. Number one, the buyer can actually pay the funding fee themselves, right? So the buyer, this is what they call an allowable expense. It is a closing cost and the buyer can pay it themselves. Secondly, if you negotiate, yes, the seller can also pay for this. Well, I know for like the last two years where the market was absolutely insane, sellers weren't going to negotiate at all. So a lot of buyers had to pay for it themselves. But as the market continues to shift, like it's doing right now, more and more sellers might be open to negotiating. And this is where this may come back into play. But the third thing is the most important way, right? The VA funding fee can be financed. It can be rolled into the loan. And this is huge. Why? Because if we have a buyer who doesn't have a lot of cash, right? We have a seller who doesn't want to negotiate. We still have a way to pay the funding fee. We can just roll it into the loan. And that is a very popular option that a lot of people choose. So here's the new chart. Here's the new VA funding fee. Matt, will you make this available for him as well, please? So if you guys look up at the top, you can download the chart. So you guys are going to be representing a buyer. The buyer is going to go out. They want to, they want to buy a house. They are choosing to put zero money down. The first time they use their VA loan, the VA funding fee is, test question, 2.3%. 2.3%. Again, the buyer can pay this, the seller can pay it, or they can roll it into the loan. But they need to be prepared for 2.3%. Okay. For every subsequent house, this is where people say the VA loan might be a little expensive, right? It's 3.6%. But here's the trick, because I agree, 3.6 is it's a little high, right? But that's at 100% financing. I get asked this question way more than you would think. Can a veteran put money down on a VA loan? Of course they can, right? You can put money down on any mortgage program that's out there, right? But if you do it with a VA loan, something awesome happens. So if they choose to put at least 5% down, the VA says that they created a break point and they drop that 3.6% to 1.65. This is huge. Why? Because this is a one-time fee and it's done. There is no mortgage insurance. There is no PMI. So here's what's crazy. The government just said that roughly 44% of all the veterans that are out there who have an active mortgage have the other government program known as the FHA loan. Now, I'm not saying that an FHA loan is bad, but when you start to compare an FHA loan to a VA loan, there's some things you need to pay attention to. Number one, FHA, mandatory down payment. It's at least three and a half percent. It may be higher, right? But number two, here's what's crazy. The FHA loan has a fee called upfront mortgage insurance that's due the day of closing. Sounds just like the funding fee, right? But this is 1.75%. Well, the VA funding fee is only 1.65%. So I get it. That's not a massive difference. But here's what is. The FHA loan has mortgage insurance on it for the entire life of the loan now. About five years ago, maybe six years ago, the government made a change to this program and mortgage insurance never goes away on an FHA loan. It is for the entirety of the mortgage. And how much is that? Uh, it's it's about it's one point it's one point eight five basis points per year, right? So I'll put it into I'll put it into better math for you. A two hundred and seventy thousand dollar house is about $200 a month in mortgage insurance that is completely wasted because when you have a VA loan, you don't have to worry about that at all, right? Well, $200 a month times 12 months a year is what? That is $2,400 a year in after-tax money on fees that the veteran should not have to pay. Average veteran stays in their house seven to 10 years. I'll do 10 years because I have to do public math and this is it's just easier. Uh, 2,400 times 10 is what? $24,000 on average are what our veterans are wasting on the average price home in America by using an FHA loan where they should be using a VA loan. And I get all fired up and I get all aggravated about this because why? Because I fell into this trap. 
when I got out of the army, my wife and I were moving back to Houston, Texas for the first time. My loan officer and my real estate agent both said, no seller is ever going to accept a VA loan. You should go with FHA. So I trusted them. I believed them, right? They were representing me. Uh, it's ultimately, it's my fault. I didn't do my own homework. I didn't do my research. So, you know, I'm to blame here too, but I ended up going FHA. And one day somebody broke this down to me and I realized exactly what was happening. That light bulb moment went off. So I went and I got my HUD one, my closing document, and I gathered up all my mortgage information and I started adding everything up. I lost over $17,000 in a relatively short period of time on something called mortgage insurance that I should have never had to pay. And it was super frustrating. Uh, and then I think about all the other people who are falling directly into this category. Guys, it's significant. Lots and lots of folks are wasting money and they don't even know it, right? Next slide I'm going to show you is probably one of the most important slides you're going to see today. This one's uh, the game changer. This one's I think is pretty awesome. VA made a change. Here's what they said. If the veteran has a service-connected disability, then the VA funding fee is eliminated for life. If the veteran has a documented service-connected disability, they never have to pay the VA funding fee again. This is huge. Why? Uh, well, roughly in every state that's out there, we've already done all kinds of research. The VA, the VA posts all this information every single year. They update stuff. Uh, but about 30 to 35 percent, depending on which state you live in, uh, 30 to 35 percent of the veterans in that state have a service connected disability. So what would be a service connected disability? Service connected means military related. Right. Uh, so uh, tinnitus. Tinnitus is ringing in the ears. All of us who are combat arms have ringing in the ears. Right. So infantry, mortars, tankers, pilots, folks on naval submarines. A lot of us have ringing in the ears. That would eliminate the VA funding fee. Uh, PTSD. A PTSD is usually about a 40% or higher disability rating. That would eliminate the VA funding fee. Any injury that happened in the military that the VA acknowledges would eliminate the funding fee. So what does this really mean? Here's what it really means. If somebody has a service-connected disability, there's almost no mortgage on earth that's better than VA for them. Why? Well, number one, it's the only mortgage we can get 100% financing with, right? Number two, for the first time ever, we're no longer capped. Number three, we know that the interest rates are going to be very competitive, if not the best, right? Number four, it already doesn't have mortgage insurance. And now number five, you just eliminated one of the major closing costs called the, called the VA funding fee with the service-connected disability. So in my opinion, if they have a service-connected disability, mm -mm, they should be thinking VA all day. Right. So here's what came out January 1st of 2020. Uh, the following individuals do not have to pay the funding fee. Uh, a, VA, a veteran receiving VA compensation for a service connected disability. Boom. Right there. Compensation starts at 10 percent. Disability ratings go in tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, so forth, so on. Uh, so if somebody has a 10 percent disability rating or higher, they never have to pay the funding fee again. And the ones that were also on this one were surviving spouses. Uh, surviving spouse has to be has to be uh, dictated by the VA. They're the ones who would who would provide uh, benefits to a surviving spouse, right? And then this one's awesome too. This one I guarantee you most people don't know. A service member who is on active duty, so somebody who's still in the military, if they've been awarded the Purple Heart, they are now exempt from the funding fee. That's relatively new, and so I say this because. As you go out there and you work with uh, and you go out there and you work with veterans or for all of my veterans who are actually here watching today, if if you have a if you have a Purple Heart, guys, we need to know that. And then number two, if you're if you're working by a military base, make sure you're asking our active duty troops, because I guarantee you they don't you know, they don't realize that that's a, a benefit for them. All right. So before we do that, I need to ask poll questions. Make sure you guys are still alive. Not completely bored. Got a lot of you guys here, so that's pretty cool. And you guys can ask questions too. Ray is in the chat box. Definitely uh, let him know what you guys are thinking. All right. First question. How many of you guys have a VA transaction right now? How many of you guys are working with veterans today? That's good. Yeah. A lot of you guys are actually here. And I see some of the I see some of the chat, some of the chat stuff happening. Matt's managing that. Matt's managing the chat during in in our on Facebook and YouTube. So you can ask him questions for sure. Uh, next question. 
What is your favorite branch of the military? FYI, there is a right answer. Yeah, so uh, depending on how you guys answer this is, is what test you get. Matt, how many tests do you have? 19, 19, you have 19 versions of this test. Why? What's wrong with you? Oh, each one's a little bit harder. The first one's like Sesame Street. The last one, the VA can't pass. Got it. And everything in between, I assume. Great. All right. Hopefully you remember what branch I served in because it's the, it's the football team that's going to win this weekend, just so you know. And all the Navy folks on my team will not like that. Will not like that. You guys are just killing me right now. All you guys are choosing Navy. Some of you guys are choosing Space Force. I got you. Everybody loves the Marines. You guys choose the Marines every time, right? Uh, but you guys are just crushing me. You're like, you guys don't like the Army anymore? Come on. I'm a former drill sergeant from the Army. How am I supposed to feel about this? True story, too, by the way. All right. Well, I guess you guys will just have to get the hard test. Oof. Better pay attention. Better pay attention. What we should do is take prop bets on the final score uh, of this of this game this weekend. That's what we should do. We should find out closest score wins. All right. What do we win, they say. We'll have to figure that out. How does somebody qualify? How does somebody qualify? So it really boils down to two different things, right? Did this person serve enough time in the military? And basically, did they not get in trouble, right? So this is how qualification works. So when it boils down to serving in the military here, Matt, will you go ahead and make that available for them? So when, when it boils down to did somebody serve the proper amount of time to be eligible, Was it, it really depends on when they served in the military. It would be way easier if it was just the same for everybody, but it's not. So, for example, I'll take the Vietnam era. The Vietnam era is 1964 to 1975. If somebody during that time period served 90 total days, they are eligible for a VA loan the rest of their life. So my father falls into this group. My father served during Vietnam. Uh, he's a Marine. I grew up in a Marine household. So, you know, I, my, I have two grandparents. One's Air Force, one's Navy. So as you can imagine, it's an all-military family and everybody. Uh, Thanksgivings are real interesting. We'll go with that. But during this Vietnam era, a lot of the folks that we talk to think that their benefit has expired. They don't think they're eligible. My dad was one of them. My dad purchased four different homes, never once used his VA loan until the last one. Why? because he thought it was expired. At the time it was, but the government made a change to the program. They reinstated everybody's benefits and now everybody can have it for the rest of their life, right? So I say that because I teach at VFWs, I teach at American Legions and, and these different groups of folks, they, they just don't realize that they have access to this. So as you go out there and you work with folks who I would say, folks who probably served like maybe early mid eighties or before, a lot of them don't think they have access to this benefit, so but they actually do. For the test, we're going to talk about the Gulf War era. The Gulf War era is uh, 1990 through today, so basically the last 32 years. If somebody served during that time period, how long do they have to serve to be eligible? It's two different groups, sure, two different ways. Number one is 24 continuous months or uh, 90 days deployed, 90 days deployed, right? So deployment is... It's typically anything outside of CONUS. So like Alaska, Hawaii, uh, those would be considered a deployment. And then you have all the standard ones, right? Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, you know, Korea, Germany, Italy, uh, things like that. If somebody spends 90 days outside of the country, they're eligible for a VA loan the rest of their life. Okay. Uh, if not, then they, if they stay in the United States, they need to do 24 months. Well, 24 months is the exact same time period as what? Guys, two years. I promise you, when you get the test, you're going to say that the answer is not available. I don't see it. Right? Two years is the same thing as 24 months. I promise. It's there. You can do it. Right? So, make sense? That's that group. Next group, active duty. If they are currently active duty, they need 90 continuous days to earn their eligibility after basic training, boot camp, or academies, okay? So once somebody gets out of basic training and then they go into their additional training where they learn how to do their job, then they get assigned to a duty station. Once they've been at that duty station for 90 days, they are eligible for the VA loan the rest of the time that they're in. When they exit the military is where they need the two-year rule or 
uh, 90 days deployed. So technically, you do have to qualify twice. Makes sense? And then the last group, National Guard and Reserves. Theirs is a little bit different. Theirs is six years. Six years, okay? So if they're National Guard or they served in the Reserves, they need six years of service in order to be eligible. Or, and this is a big, gigantic or, 90 days of activated service. Guys, think about the last, what are we, like three years into COVID now? It feels like forever. Uh, but think about the last three years, right? Think about during election. Think about during all the chaos that was going on. Think about what was happening in this country. Guys, we've had National Guard and reservists activated all across this country for all kinds of different things. We've had a whole bunch. I served with a whole bunch who went to uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. We've had a whole bunch that during COVID and the whole pandemic thing, a whole bunch of people are now eligible for a VA loan and they don't even know it. I'm in Texas. The National Guard has been working at the border for like 10 months now. Every single one of those people are now eligible for a VA loan. Matt, what was that stat that we just got? Yeah, from last week. 62? 64. 64,000 people from the National Guard and Reserves have earned VA loan eligibility just within like the last 16 months. That's how many people, and they have no clue, right? So if I were you, I would take like some of this marketing material when we're done. I would go take it to some of these National Guard bases and, and see if you can drop off some flyers or some education material because they don't know and they're looking for representatives to help them. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, right? Uh, so the other thing is you can't get in trouble. You can't get in trouble, right? So they need to have an honorable discharge in order to be eligible for a VA loan. In some cases, they can have a general discharge, right? A general discharge could be all kinds of different things, right? Some sort of a hardship, uh, reduction in force, which is a government decision. Uh, again, service-connected disability or medical condition. I mean, a lot of people have to end their career short because of that. So the two groups who would not qualify, who would not qualify for a VA loan test question. If they have a dishonorable discharge, they can forget about this. And then my favorite, bad conduct. Bad conduct. Do you know how bad you have to be to be worse than dishonorable? I mean, you gotta, you gotta bring it. You gotta try pretty hard. So I'm gonna tell you, I, I mean, I, a lot of people are young and they make some pretty silly decisions. But if somebody has a bad conduct discharge, they're gonna, they're, they're not gonna get a whole lot of help from the government. I promise you that. So I always like to think of Dwight. Because uh, he's always up to something. But uh, uh, if you guys know who Dwight is, I love this guy. It's one of the greatest characters ever created, right? Bad conduct. All right. What is the most important document that a veteran has to have in order to get a VA loan? It is the one. It is called the Certificate of Eligibility, the COE, right? This is what it looks like. This is the most important piece of paper that we have to have to get a VA loan. What it says is, who are they? Did they serve the proper amount of time? Did they not get in trouble? And then it tells us a bunch of other things. It tells us, have they used their VA loan in the past? Did they pay it off? Did they go into foreclosure? It tells us, do they have a service-connected disability, right? Because if they do, then we can you know, eliminate the funding fee. It gives us all kinds of information. This is a piece of paper that... You are not allowed to fund a loan until we have that on file. The VA will not allow it, right? The COE is the most important uh, piece of paper that we have to get. It is imperative that we get this thing as quickly as possible. Now, here's the deal. A veteran can get their COE a bunch of different ways. They can go to the VA and go get it. Don't tell them to do that. They can call the VA uh, if they got time. I mean, they're going to need a lot of it, right? They can go online to ebenefits.va.gov and they can download their own certificate of eligibility if they have access granted to do so, right? But my team, my entire team is ex-military. We have something called VA credentials. We can go directly into the portal and we can pull a COE and it takes, it takes Ray like, what, two minutes max to go get a COE. It is so easy to do. It is, it's, don't, don't make your veteran have to go do something complicated when we can do it for them. We're also going to do this for free. I know that some mortgage companies are starting to charge for this. What would take Ray two minutes to do, she, you should not have to pay for, right? But here's the deal. This is where some loan officers make a giant mistake. What they say is we, 
we just get the COE by the time we close. Technically, that's correct, but fundamentally, it's completely wrong. Why? Because if there's a mistake on the COE, guys, it can take anywhere from three to four weeks to get it fixed. I've seen everything. I've seen misspelled names. I've seen the wrong social security number. I've seen people who are buying a home for the first time, and it has a list of foreclosures under their name. Their entire benefit is completely blown up. We just had one, Ray, what was it? It was probably like eight days, maybe 10, a week and a half. This person is a 100% disabled veteran. And when we pulled the COE, guess what it said? Zero, no disability. So now we can't even count his income and we have to charge him the funding fee. No, we're not doing that. We have to go get it corrected because it because the COE was wrong. So my point is, it is better to find that day one than two days before closing and find out you got a problem that's going to take a month to fix, right? So that's why my team, we pull it. When we do a pre-approval, like when we start that pre-approval process, we pull the COE at the exact same time. Make sense? All right, inspections, inspections. Uh, so one of the things that you guys are going to see uh, or that you probably already know is with a VA loan, uh, there is a mandatory WDO, wood destroying organisms. You know, most of us just call it a termite inspection, right? But technically, they're going to look for everything. They're looking for, you know, they're looking for mold. They're looking for anything that could destroy wood and cause a problem. Now, here's the question. Who has to pay for the WDO? And I know most of you are saying what? The seller has to pay. That is false. Matt, will you make this available for him? There, there it is. The government made a change in June of this year, mid-June of this year. And the WDO, the termite inspection repairs, are now a negotiable item. Uh, however, if there is significant termite damage and they will not give us a clear to close, it is mandatory that we get that corrected and we have to have a clear termite report or we have to show clearly how it's going to be fixed. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, right? So that is now a negotiable item. That is huge. Uh, water wells. If the home has a water well, it is mandatory that it get inspected and it's mandatory that it pass. There has to be clean drinking water for the family, which I agree with. Everything else is subject to the appraiser, right? So if the appraiser goes out there and says, hey, there's obviously something wrong with the septic system. Now it's mandatory that it get uh, a second opinion, right? But if not, everything else is negotiable. So the biggest one that we're looking for is termite and then water well. If it has like a, a mud district or whatever, that doesn't matter. The mud district covers that. It's, if it's a personal water well. It has to be inspected. So based on where you guys live, and I saw, I mean, based on what I saw earlier, you guys are everywhere. Uh, so based on where you are, you may or may not have a massive termite issue. I'm here in Houston, Texas. We got termites for days. My house gets checked four times a year to make sure that uh, that we're not having termite issues. But uh, I know obviously some of you guys up north, you may not have even seen a termite because apparently they're pretty fickle. They don't like the cold. So, all right, mandatory occupancy. Another rule. And we got like probably like 20 minutes left and we're done. Uh, mandatory occupancy. It is mandatory that the veteran or their spouse has to actually live in this house, right? So what does that mean? It means that we can't buy an investment property. We have to buy it with the intent to occupy the home, okay? Uh, so the basic question is, is how long? Uh, they have 60 days from the day of closing for either the veteran or their spouse to move into that property. How long do they have to stay? Guys, that answer is one year. After one year, that's when the veteran can do anything they want to do. If they want to turn around and rent it, they can rent it. If they want to turn it into a VRBO, they can do that. Anything else that they want to do, but they have to stay there for one year. Make sense? If it's less than one year, they have to have a, they have to have a specific reason why, and they have to notify the government as to why they're making this change. Right? What is not allowed? You cannot do vacant land. Vacant land is not an option. Why? There's nothing to occupy, okay? They have to buy the land with a land lot loan or they have to buy land in cash. Then they can do the VA construction loan, but they can't just start and buy land. Make sense? What can they do? Obviously, single families take build home. That's all day. Condos and townhouses, the greatest majority of condos and townhouses are now VA approved and VA eligible. Uh, multiple units. 
they can do up to a fourplex. Okay. So if a veteran wants to buy a fourplex, they still have to live in one, but they can rent the other three out immediately. That is absolutely acceptable by the VA. So they can do a duplex, triplex, fourplex, you name it. Uh, mobile slash manufactured homes. Yep. That's VA eligible. And then you guys always ask for some reason, new construction. Yes. New construction is absolutely uh, available. What can they not do? They can't do commercial property. They can't do anything that's not typical for the area. This is not typical for the area. They can't do something like this. Plus it has an engine, plus it has wheels. And yes, do not be fooled. That is a car with a camper welded to it. Saw that as I was driving from Texas to Florida and it was awesome. And there were two people that lived in that thing full time. We talked to them at a gas station. Can you imagine? And they were they had driven all the way around the country. They were making a road trip from like circling the entire country. I'd lose my own mind, much less have somebody else with me. All right, raw land, undeveloped lots, not available. And then investment homes, like we mentioned. You can't buy as an investment. You have to live there first and then turn it into an investment. Make sense? All right. Scenario. So now I'm going to show you guys a scenario. Uh, this was uh, this was early this year, uh, probably I don't remember February, March time frame. Uh, so what we had, uh, we had a retired uh, command sergeant major from the army. Uh, he was buying a home. He was making a full price offer on the home, and he was told that his offer would be better considered if it was a conventional loan, right? Uh, so the sergeant major uh, asked me, he said, well, you know, can you just show me what the difference is on buying a conventional loan versus a VA loan? And I said, I don't think you're going to like it. You really need to consider VA. We probably need to talk to these folks, right? So here's what happened. Conventional loan versus VA loan. It was a $500,000 house. Both of them were going to be 30 years long. Here's what's crazy. At the time, the interest rate on the conventional loan was 5.99%. VA was 4.875%. Again, this was a lot earlier this year and things go up and down all the time. But look at this. Remember, I told you VA is very competitive and a lot of times VA is way better. It is absolutely crushing it here. Secondly, conventional loan, he now has a mandatory down payment, right? So he's got a 5% down payment for $25,000 where VA was zero. He had the money, but he did not want to use that money. It was already earmarked for something else, right? Now, so he's mortgaging four seventy five dollars versus $500,000, but his payment's like $200 higher. Why? Well, number one, the interest rate is higher. And then number two, one, after the interest rate's higher, now he also has what? Mortgage insurance, right? So now he's got to worry about PMI, where with the, with the, uh, you know, the VA loan, we don't have to worry about that. So what does it actually add up to? Here's what's crazy. When you start to add all of these figures up, the additional interest paid on the VA loan was going to be $71,000. The total mortgage insurance for that piece of, for that, uh, piece of property was going to be $34,000. Then you have the $25,000 down payment that he didn't want to put down, but he understood. The total difference between the conventional loan and the VA loan was $130,000 for a, ha a $500,000 house. That is absolutely crazy to me. But then we took it a little bit further. Then we took it a little bit further. We said, that's, that's the true cost. What about the opportunity cost? And so when we look at the opportunity cost, what we said is what would have happened if we would have invested that money? Instead of giving that money to a bank, what would have happened if we invested it in ourselves? So we took the first $25,000 and we opened up an investment account. Makes sense? Then we took what is the $467 a month, which was the difference in interest and the difference in mortgage insurance. None of that helps our veteran, right? We put we started investing that every single month. Then once mortgage insurance fell off, we still did the $200 a month for the remaining time. What would that difference have actually been if we invested it in the S&P 500, which historically has averaged 8% for like the last 50 years, right? So all of these numbers, right? What does it actually equal? Guys, it's $823,000 difference in our veterans' favor versus what the bank was able to make off of them. It's real money and it really matters. So in this situation, what we did was we uh, we had to call the listing agent, uh, ended up talking to the listing agent, ended up talking to the seller, broke down that chart to him, explained to him why this person should be able to go VA. They had concerns about the appraisal. And so here's what was interesting. And this is just like your guys' numbers from earlier. This particular homeowner had a whole bunch of military in their family. 
And the homeowner was the one who was like, I didn't realize what we were actually doing. I, I, I didn't, I was being guided. You know what? Let's let this person have the opportunity to go VA. We ordered the appraisal right away. We got the appraisal back in like less than, I, I want to say it was eight days. It was less than 10 days for sure. Guys, the appraisal came back. Everything was perfectly fine. There wasn't any concerns. The home met value. We marched right along, closed this VA loan. The, our, our command sergeant major was actually taken care of and it was all good to go. But a lot of this was around that thing called the VA stigma. And this is where that stigma is. All these appraisal issues and all these different things are going to, it's too challenging. So many things have changed when it comes to how VA stuff is done. And if you haven't done a VA transaction in a while, it is light years easier than it used to be. And we have seen the VA is very accommodating and more willing to help us than they've ever been in the past. So my point is things continue to change and the VA is evolving and it's a very, very impressive mortgage vehicle now. Okay. So qualification guidelines. So now I'm going to break this down. Now I'm going to tell you how to win deals. We take a test and we're out of here. So we'll be out of here soon enough. All right. Here's what's crazy. The VA cares about two major things. Did that person serve the proper amount of time, right? And did they not get in trouble? That's what the VA cares about for a veteran to be eligible for the program. But when it comes to lending money, what the VA really does is they watch the banks. They watch us like a hawk. It is the mortgage company's job to do responsible lending, right? We cannot set people up for failure. But here's what's crazy. The VA tasks every single lender, all of the banks, all the mortgage companies, for, to evaluate the risk of lending money. It is our job to actually decide if a person is, is worthy of getting the loan or not. But here's what's crazy. Every single lender evaluates risk differently. So I'll say it this way. There are thousands, literally thousands of lending institutions that can do VA loans. And in the exact same breath, I'm going to tell you there's a thousand different VA loans out there. This is, this is what's one of the craziest parts of this entire thing, right? You would think, oh, this is a government loan. Everything is, everything is, you know, right, left, right, left. Absolutely false. Every single mortgage company does it their own way. This is why when you're, when, when your client goes out to the first bank and the first bank says no, and then they go to the second bank and the second bank says yes, because everybody has different rules. Okay. Here's what the VA says. VA says we really have to account for four major things. Credit, income, assets, and then that property valuation, right? The appraisal. Man, you guys are texting me up right now. So here's what's crazy, right? From a credit perspective, credit is nothing more than a snapshot on how somebody handles their uh, handles their debt, right? What what's out there? Are there any whammies coming down the pipe? What have they done in the past? Are they paying their stuff, you know, on time? Things like that. But here's what's crazy. Every single mortgage company has to evaluate the FICO credit score. This is different than Credit Karma. This is different than some of those other entities, right? Credit, credit scores range from 300 all the way to 850. Here's the first difference you're going to see. There's a lot of mortgage companies right now today that say you need to have a 700 credit score or better in order to get a VA loan right? Then there's this huge group in the middle. Most mortgage companies fall somewhere around a 620 or 640. You need a 620 or 640 or better to get a VA loan, right? At Loan Depot with, with my team, we have the ability to go, to go below that, right? But every single company looks at it differently, right? That's why one company says no and the other can say yes. It's what will that, how much risk will that bank actually take, right? Secondly, Income and employment. The VA says we clearly have to identify how they're going to repay the loan. Why? Well, number one, we can't set up, we can't set their family up for failure. Number two, who's on the hook for 25%? The VA. The VA, right? So they don't want people going into foreclosure. That costs a lot of money, right? So we can consider all income sources, right? Disability can be considered, right? Investments, annuities, retirement, and then jobs. But here's another big difference. How long does somebody have to be on their job before we can count their income? Every single bank is different. Some will tell you two months. Some will tell you six months. Some will tell you two paycheck stubs. It is up to the bank on what they're willing to accept or not willing to accept. And every single one of them is different. I have seen people be told by the first bank, I'm sorry, we can't count that income until you've been there for a year. 
though that said family went and rented a home for a year because they thought that was the VA's rules. Guys, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? Uh, assets. Do they have enough money on hand to complete the transaction? So listen to me. Listen, I know that this is a hundred percent financing. That does not mean that they won't have closing costs. There are still a cost of doing business. First off, they're probably going to have taxes to pay. Secondly, there's going to be some title company fees. There's going to be some transfer fees. There's going to be mortgage company fees. There's going to be the big one guaranteed is going to be homeowners insurance. Uh, then they might have to pay the funding fee if they don't have a service connected disability, right? So all of those things are out there. We need to make sure that they have enough assets on hand to complete the transaction. If not, one of the options that we can do is gift funds. Gift funds have to come from a family member or somebody who's like family, right? This is so not every bank will allow gift funds. Most do. So that's another area where, where we have to pay attention to that, right? And then ultimately we have that appraisal process. Uh, if you haven't done a VA loan in a while, the appraisal process is light years better than it was in the past. Uh, they put timelines on it now. Uh, they have different situations that are out there to, to all to help the veteran. Uh, it's, it's unbelievably better than it was uh, you know, five to 10 years ago. So I wouldn't let that stigma, uh, I wouldn't let that stigma stick around because I think VA, VA is one of the easier loans to do now, in my opinion, right? So all that being said, that is, uh, those are the big things that the VA is concerned about. And this is why every single mortgage company is different. So let's end it with this. How do we win VA deals? How do we win VA deals? The first thing you need to know is how VA works. That's why you guys are here today. You're learning how this VA program works. But one of the things that's going to happen from time to time is you're going to have something called a tidewater situation. This is that dreaded low appraisal process. The VA mortgage program is the only program out there that, that lets the real estate agent and the loan officer have a small window for which to appeal a low appraisal, right? So if a tidewater situation is coming in, you technically have about 48 hours to provide your comps uh, or any material facts about the house that can help justify uh, the pricing level, right? This is the only mortgage program that allows you to do that. But secondly is this, and I want you to consider this and I want you to think about this, right? One of the other stigmas that's out there is that veterans don't have much money. Guys, this is completely false. We are not all broke. In fact, a lot of veterans that I know are very financially secure, very financially sound, make good, prudent financial decisions. That's just one of those myths that's out there and it drives me crazy. So here's the deal. If a house does come in with a low appraisal, so let's say they're buying a $500,000 house and the appraisal comes in at 490 or 485, whatever, right? So let's say there's a $10,000 difference. There's really multiple situations that happen. Number one, yes, they can terminate the deal because the house didn't meet appraisal, right? But number two, the seller can drop their price, right? Number three, did you know the veteran has the right to pay the difference? There's a lot of veterans out there who would prefer to pay the $10,000 to actually own the home and secure their family rather than start this entire process over. So uh, a lot of folks, uh, uh, you know, I've been in real estate for over 20 years. A lot of real estate agents think that, that the veteran can't bring money to the closing table. Guys, that is false. The veteran has the right to pay the difference. And a lot of them actually can, right? All right. Secondly, think outside the box. I want you to think outside the box. VA, VA has one of the most impressive things that we can do, and it's called the VA renovation loan. Oddly enough, one of the coolest things that I've ever seen, Loan Depot helped build this thing. Loan Depot worked directly with the VA to create the VA renovation loan. We can do so many amazing things with this loan, right? We get, let's say, let's say somebody's going out and they're looking at houses and they're not finding anything, but they do find a house that they, they like the bones of the house, but it needs a roof. It needs carpet. It needs paint. Maybe it needs a remodeled kitchen. Guys, we can use the VA renovation loan to actually complete that transaction. The everything will close on time. That work doesn't get done beforehand. The money goes into, goes into an escrow account and it gets paid out as, as it's being done. We've used this thing to save transactions. We've used this thing to create transactions. Uh, I'll tell you two stories on this. We had one, there was a house in San Francisco. Uh, it was a million dollar property, right? San Fran. So uh, was, it, I want to say it was 1.3 million and there was about $60,000 of termite damage. 
The seller said, I am not fixing a thing. So we went to the VA and we said, hey, we're going to turn it into a renovation loan and we're going to have all that termite damage repaired after the fact. The VA approved it. The house closed on time. We the the we had a uh, contractor. We had a contractor go out there, give us a bid on what that on what that work looks like. That money got escrowed. Contractor did the work. He got paid out of escrow. Everything was done. VA stamped it and said, "Good to go." Saved the deal. Saved a one point three million dollar deal with a renovation loan. The second one or the second story is is one of my absolute favorite stories I've ever heard. Um, this particular family, uh, was looking for a house in this, in one neighborhood for a long time. They had made countless bids, uh, never got their VA deal accepted, but unfortunately there was a house that had caught on fire and this thing burnt all the way down. Nothing but, you know, sticks, you know, two by four sticking up, right? The sellers were able to take their insurance, whatever. And then they, the, the new buyers bought the slab. We used a renovation loan and we rebuilt the entire house using the VA renovation loan. And it was done from, from I'm talking from the, from the concrete all the way up. It was pretty extraordinary. So we don't have a limit on ours. Not every company has a VA renovation loan. A lot of companies have the standard. I think it's 30,000, maybe 35,000. We do not have a limit on ours. We can do whatever, whatever the clients want to do. So this thing's awesome. And it's, it, it saves deals. I mean, it's it's really cool. And from a seller's perspective, everything happens in a timely manner. Like it's not even it, it, everything. All the renovation stuff happens after the fact. So, all right, guys, if you want to win VA deals, one of the most important things you need to do is go play in traffic, right? Go play in traffic. If you want to get hit by veterans, you got to go play in traffic. Go to recruiting stations, go to National Guard posts, go to reservist centers, VFWs, American Legions. Every single city that's out there has some sort of veteran organization that's in it. Go in with the right attitude. Go in with the right mind. Go in trying to help. Go in trying to lead with education. All of these things are appreciated. You go in with the wrong attitude, people will see right through you and you will get thrown out really quickly. Education is one of the best things you can do to go win business. We're going to give you a bunch of marketing material when we're done. But I'm telling you, all of these organizations, that if you're a VA, if you're a veteran advocate, they will post your material and you will win deals that way. I promise you, right? Ultimately, one of the most important things you need to do, you need to work with people who understand this program. I don't, I want you to work with my team. I love my team. I have an all veteran team. They're amazing. I don't care who you work with. Just make sure that they're doing, just make sure that they know what they're doing with VA and they're not guiding people away from VA. Okay. Work with us that we, we know it inside and out. That's kind of what we do. Right. So ultimately I'm going to end it with this. Thank me for my service. I get this. I hear this all the time and I, I, I appreciate it. Not everybody does. You should know that. Right. I appreciate it. And a whole bunch of people do. Right. But I think that if you really want to thank us for our service, one of the most important things you need to remember is do not deny me the benefit that I've earned, right? Don't be the real estate agent that's out there telling me I can't use something that I gave up eight years of my life to earn, right? And then secondly, we have to change the stigma. The stigma in the real estate world that talks about VA is unbelievable. I've heard it for 20 years. I still hear it to this day. Every time I go do classes, I hear crazy things. Guys, if you want to truly thank me for my service, understand how this program works be an advocate for us, change the stigma associated with this thing, and don't deny me a benefit that I've earned. Help me with the benefit that I've earned. And I think if you do all of those things, you truly have thanked somebody for their service. So that being said, it's my favorite time. Test time. Y'all ready? How y'all feel? Matt, what test do we go with? Like 22? Uh, they absolutely hated the Army today from what I remember. It's all good though. Look at that chat box. You guys are... Yeah, it's getting after it in there. Good job. All right. No, no, we like him. We're not gonna like absolutely crush him. He wants it. He wants it. I'm like, no, let's go with, like test three. All right, here we go. VA here. All right, it's loaded. All right, first question: What is a VA loan? What is a VA loan? Is it a twenty-five percent guarantee or a hundred percent, one thousand million percent guarantee? 
make sure that you guys don't like read completely into that. It's not how much can you finance, it's how much is the VA guarantee. That should be a real good hint. And there's always like a seven second delay, so I have to like wait for y'all's answers to come in so I can post the next question. All right, here we go. The answers are coming in. All right, the majority of you guys got this correct. It is a 25% guarantee. It is 100% what? Financing. Financing. It's not like meant to be a trick question, but it just comes out as a trick question. So, all right, when was the VA loan created? Was it World War One or World War Two? Man, we're just killing it right now. World War One or World War Two? Yeah, so Matt, Matt's, uh, you guys have heard me talk to him like this entire time. He he runs like the whole behind the scenes. He handles all the tech stuff. That's, you know, we're live on YouTube and like Facebook sites and all kinds of things right now. So he's he's running around with his hair, with his, you know, with his pulling his hair out, which is crazy because he doesn't have any. It's even more impressive. All right, World War II, 100% of y'all got that correct. Good job. Nice. All right. Does the VA home loan benefit expire? Does the VA home loan benefit expire? So we've been friends for over 30 years. Well, I'm his best friend. I'm, he's more of an acquaintance to me. Uh, but he, uh, he's, uh, we have the exact same birthday. So we think like a whole lot alike, except for this moment. See right here, I think that you guys have enjoyed the class. Maybe you learned something and maybe you found it beneficial. He thinks that when it comes to the test, everybody should fail. I should grade on a curve. I should do survival of the fittest. Only one person gets a certificate. Like, dude, you're crazy. All right, does benefit expire? 100% of y'all got this right. The answer is no. The benefit does not expire. Uh, can the veteran use the VA loan benefit more than once? Can they use it more than once? That's the number one question I get. Which I think is crazy that that, like, when I first was being asked that question, I was like, oh, okay, this, this person doesn't understand. Uh, now that I've been asked that question like 10,000 times, it's, it's like unbelievable to me that, that people don't know this. I can use it as many times as I wish. 100% of y'all got that correct, by the way. Uh, can the veteran have multiple VA loans at a time? Can't. So this is that big trick question, right? Can I have multiple VA loans? There is a way. But what do I have to do? I have to occupy it for how long? One year. And then I can do what? I can get the next house. Of course, you still have to qualify for the loan. Like just because you have multiple houses doesn't mean you have enough income to pay all the stuff. All right. Some of y'all missed this one. All right. Can a veteran have multiple homes? The answer is yes. But there's rules that we have to pay attention to. Right. All right, when is the funding fee paid? So this is a very poorly written question, Matthew. This is a veteran who does not have a service-connected disability. They do have to pay the funding fee. What we're asking is when is there actually a transition of cash? Is it at closing or prior to closing? Or I think he gives you like some crazy answer. Always prior to closing. Like what? Are you, how do you? If the, you're like, like, this is that double negative question where you have to like read it like six times to figure out what they're actually asking. I hate those questions. Because you know the right answer if people would just write it normally, like a normal human being. It's when you go in there and you're like, I'm going to purposely write this backwards and then twice. It's the point. Always at closing. There you go. Good job, guys. All right. Funding fee. First time use. How much is the funding fee for the first time use? So here we go. Pull out your chart. This is a veteran who's getting 100% financed. They do not have a service-connected disability. What is the funding fee for the first time use? For those of y'all who don't have the chart and you wanted to take a wild guess, I would think somewhere around 2.3% would feel good to me. That would make me feel like that's correct. That's not cheating. They don't have the chart. You know how I know it's not cheating? Because every answer has been selected. Yeah, that's not cheating. That's saving them from themselves. I don't care. They've been awesome today. What are you talking about? 
All they did was answer emails and text messages, and every once in a while they paid attention. Right? The answer is 2.3%. Good job. Oddly enough, like 90% of y'all got that correct. That's not usually the case. All right, here we go. If the veteran puts 5% down, hint, hint, what does the VA funding fee reduce to? So if it was 2.3% and we know that it has to go down, like if I was taking this test, I'd be like, oh, it's so easy. It's 1.65. I don't even have to look at the chart because the context clues tell me that I know that it has to go down and it was 2.3%. So 1.65, if I was taking the test, that is what I would choose for sure, without a doubt. And like I said, that is still not cheating. Cheating would be you should choose 1.65, right? You see the difference? I don't care if you're going to boycott it. Yes, they're going to get their certificate. I understand this is a question that knocks most people out. I didn't help them. You know what's crazy, Matt? 100% of you guys got that right. It's uh, 1.65. You guys are good. You guys are really good. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. Uh, final question. All right. During the Gulf War era, if the veteran has served 90 total days, are they eligible for a VA loan? There you go. 90 days. Are they eligible? Yes, they're going to get everything. Watch them drink my moonshine real quick. Kidding. It's water. Can't start hitting moonshine at one o'clock. Really giving up on life at that point. Yep. You guys see Matt just like just absolutely blowing you guys up in the chat. You feel free to talk trash at him. In fact, I, I encourage it. I encourage it. All right, how'd y'all do on this final question? Uh, looks like 100% of you got this wrong. So there you go. It was the actual trick question. Matt got you. It's his favorite trick question. And you all missed it. During the Gulf War era, if the veteran has served 90 total days, are they eligible for the VA loan? The answer is no. False. That is the Vietnam era. Gulf War era says how much? 24 months, a.k.a. two years. Or 90 days what? deployed. It's not 90 total days. He got you. He got you and he got you pretty bad on that one, which is funny, which is funny. Congratulations. You guys have passed the VA masterclass. This is what I did in the military. Uh, I was an uh, infantry mortarman. I absolutely loved it. It was, uh, uh, I used to repel out of helicopters, do all kinds of crazy things, really thoroughly enjoyed it. But unfortunately I got injured. I've had four major knee surgeries. I'm pending number five. Uh, and I say this not because I need sympathy. I say this because there's a lot of disabled veterans out there and you would have no clue. Most of us don't run around. We don't talk about it. You can't see tonight this, right? Uh, you know, some are obvious. You, you can tell. But here's my point. If somebody has a service-connected disability, you can save them an absolute ton of money. And that's called that the VA funding fee, right? And... Uh, if somebody has a disability from the VA, I don't think there's any mortgage on earth that's better uh, for them than VA personally. So I want you to just keep that in the back of your mind that anybody you work with, you may want to lead with education. So that way you don't have to ask. You can say things like, did you know that if you have a service connected disability, a VA loan has a bunch of fees that go away and it's awesome at that point. That way they can self-identify if they choose to, right? Makes sense. Uh, so here's the, here's the reality. I'm going to get you guys out of here in just a minute. I'm going to run through a couple of other things, right? I want your business. Uh, I am the VA team at Loan Depot. My team is amazing. I have several people who uh, graduated from West Point and the Naval Academy. Uh, I have a couple of Army Rangers on my team, several folks that just, just awesome, awesome, awesome people, okay? Uh, Patton is our boss. He's one of the greatest VA loan originators on earth. Uh, he graduated from West Point. He flew Black Hawk helicopter pilots. He's been in the business for a long time. Ray and I both report to him. This guy is pretty amazing. And so, you know, you, you, if you ever have a chance to talk to him, trust me, he's pretty good. So what do we do? Guys, we can do everything. VA loans, VA renovation loan. Don't forget this thing. It's awesome, right? But, but Ray, who's here, he can do conventional loans, FHA loans, USDA loans. We do all of that stuff. I'm one of the managers on the team, so I oversee everything that happens. You can always contact me as well. Uh, but, yeah, we get questions about refinancing too. Yes, we can help any veteran that you know 
do a refinance. So if you have a, uh, you know, if you have a family member, you have a, you know, it, it could be yourself. It could be a client, anybody who needs help. I can do all of this. And here's what the best part is. I can do this everywhere. All 50 states. My entire team is licensed everywhere in this country. So I can help you in Alaska. I can help you in Hawaii. I see. So I, you know, I looked at the, the chat box earlier. You guys are from like everywhere. Uh, so I can do this everywhere. This is my information, but I'm going to do this. Uh, Matt, will you join me? Ray, you can join too if your camera's working. Mike on. Mike on. There it is. Mm -hmm. What's up, Ray? Matt, where are you at? Uh, no, we're not doing this. You're boycotting? Yeah, this is what it looks like. This is what a boycott looks like. This is what a boycott looks like. Yeah, you get to sit here and look this at is, Ray. This is, this, is, this is why you don't have friends, Matt. It's a, the temper tantrums. I have half of a friend. You have half a friend? It was yeah, one, half, one half. Like, and you and I, we share a birthday, so we have to be cordial. But, you know, other than that, pulled the, pulled the other half of the uh, the hair out today. So I'm, I'm yeah, not There you go. Me. You shouldn't have to worry about that anymore? No, no. It's going to be easy now. Yeah, managing three different online video platforms at one time is, is, uh, is an interesting task. Nice. All right. So what do we got? Let's give them some stuff and get out of here. So if everybody goes up to the top of the chat box, you're going to see that tab called Handouts. Click Handouts. on that. The other way, Ray. Click on there, and you're going to see all uh, the stuff that I just made available. I also emailed it to you, so you guys got that. But if you want to grab it right now, go ahead and grab it. I noticed there's a couple people on their phones, so you're not going to be able to download it with your phone. So check your email. Um, and let's slide out some uh, some contact information. Let's do it. There we go. And this is going to be mainly for uh, this can be for you guys here as well. But, you know, uh, for Facebook and YouTube, this is going to be real important for you guys. Um, go ahead and pull your phone out and scan this QR code. As David likes to say, we all learned how to how to uh, use QR codes when we went to go eat during COVID. Right. The first time I went to man, I don't even remember where it was. I think it was uh, it may have been like Chili's or it was Buffalo Wild Wings. And I sat there forever. And I was like, are they going to give me a menu? And the menu was like duct tape to the table. And it was a QR code. <sighs> yeah. I grew up real fast that day. Right. Yeah. I do what with this thing? Oh, you put your camera on it and you push the yellow button? Got it. All right. Who's next? All right. Facebook. Facebook, uh, you guys can come join our real estate Facebook group. We want you to be there. Uh, everybody who's in that group, it's a pretty large group. They, they've all completed this course. Uh, they ask a lot of questions in there. Sometimes it gets really crazy, uh, but they ask a lot of questions, uh, real estate questions. We try to get you guys the right answers, get you answers from the, you know, from the VA itself. So uh, you're definitely allowed to join that. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything else has been emailed to you guys. So we're done. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, my information is there. You guys are getting an email. Check that. Sometimes it goes to the spam folder. Uh, so make sure you guys check that. But Ray will probably reach out to some of you guys just to say hello, see what he can do to help. But guys, we can help everywhere. 50 different states. If you're a veteran, because I know we have a whole bunch of people watching this online. I can see the numbers. Uh, if you have questions about a VA loan, contact Ray, contact myself. We'll get you going the right direction. For all my real estate partners out there, we're here for you. We want to be a part of your team. Uh, this is you know, I'll tell you over 90% of all of our closings are VA. That's what we do. I can do everything. If you like how we do business, we'll help you with everything. But VA is really our sweet spot. Uh, but I greatly appreciate everybody being here. It means a lot to us. I know you give us an hour and 12 minutes of your time, but uh, I hope that you learned something. I hope that you found it beneficial and uh, we'll see you guys next time. So Ray, Matt, Thank you guys as always. And then uh, everybody else, I hope you guys have a blessed day and a blessed week. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, David. All right, guys. So I'm going to end webinar ending.